Hello, today I'm going to be talking about finding constitutional isomers of the molecule C4H10O. If you're new here, my name is Leah, and on my channel you can find science and math videos. And if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment down below. Here are two terms relevant to this video. So first we have an isomer. And isomers are going to be compounds with the same formula, but a different structure. And there are different types of isomers, and one is called a constitutional isomer. And these constitutional isomers are going to be compounds with the same molecular formula, but a different connectivity. For these questions, what I like to do first is to draw a simple chain first. So with four carbons and an oxygen at the end, along with a hydrogen, we have four carbons, the oxygen, and the hydrogen at the end. And if you count these, you see that we have four carbons, one, two, three, four. And for the number of hydrogens, we have three at the end here, two here, two here, two here, and one here. So three plus two, that's five, seven, nine, and 10. All right, so this is one way to draw C4H10O. Now let's draw it a different way. So one thing you could do is that you could move this line right here over to this carbon. All right, and so if we do that, we will get a different structure. So we're moving that first line and just starting with this one. We still have the OH at the end, but now we have this line coming down here. So let's make sure that this is still with the formula C4H10O. So we have one, two, three, four carbons. And for our hydrogens, we have three here, three here, one right here, and two here, and then one over here. So three plus three, so that's six, seven, nine, and 10. So this is also a structure, okay? It's a constitutional isomer for this formula right here. All right, so let's look and see what else we can do. So if we look at this structure, we see that instead of moving this line right here to this carbon, we could have moved it to this one, which is bonded to this oxygen. All right, so let's do that. So again, we start out with our drawing with the OH here. And instead of drawing the line here, we have this methyl group coming off of this carbon instead. All right, and once again, this is going to be the same formula because we just went ahead and moved our, um, our methyl group. All right, so one, two, three, four carbons. And for our hydrogens, we have three, three, two, and one right here. Okay, and then the last one right here. Okay, so again, we have six, eight, and 10. Now, from our last structure, we could have drawn this methyl group coming from this carbon right here instead. So let's move this, this right here. Right, and that will give us something that looks like this. So we have these two methyls coming from this carbon. And just to double check, we have one, two, three, four carbons, right? And for our number of hydrogens, we have three right here, three right here, three right here, and one right here. Okay, so this over here is nine hydrogens plus one over here is 10. So, so far for our constitutional isomers for this molecule, we have just been moving around the methyl groups to different carbons. Now, another constitutional isomer could be if we move this OH group and move it to, let's say, this carbon right here. All right, so let's do that. So once again, we have our chain, but we'll stop right here because this part is going to be moved. And we'll just put that right here, put an OH, okay? And if we count again, we see one, two, three, four carbons, and for our number of hydrogens, we have three right here, two, one, one, and three. So up here, we have three plus two plus three, which is eight, and then nine and 10, right? So this still has the formula that we were given. Okay, so this would be another constitutional isomer. Now, what if we move this oxygen? and put it somewhere in the middle of the chain instead of on the end as we have been doing. All right, so we will draw this chain and we'll put the oxygen somewhere in here. 
and then still make sure we draw our four carbons. Right, so one, two, three, four carbons. And for our hydrogens, we have three, two, two, and three. Right, and if we count these up, so there's five right here plus another five right here, that is 10. Okay, so this would be another constitutional isomer um, for this molecule. Now, instead of putting the oxygen right in the center with two carbons on each side, we could have put it on the end, so at one of these points. Okay, so let's do that. So we have this carbon, then we have an oxygen, and then we have three more carbons over here. Okay, so one, two, three, four carbons. And for our number of hydrogens, we have three here, we have two here, another two here, and three here. So again, we have 10 hydrogens, four carbons, and one oxygen. So again, this is going to be a constitutional isomer for this molecule. Now, some things I want to point out. Notice how if we had decided to put this hydroxyl group over here, it would just be the same molecule. And being the same molecule would not be a constitutional isomer. These two would be equal. So this is something that you need to pay attention to so that you don't make the same molecule. You want to be making constitutional isomers and not the same molecule. Um, remember, in our definition, we said constitutional isomers are those with the same formula, but a different connectivity. And these two would have the same connectivity because it's, again, just flipped. So we have an OH, all right, in both, and then a C2, a C2, another C2, okay, another C2, and then a C3, right? And that's just the same connectivity, just flipped, all right? And flipping doesn't count as a constitutional isomer. Now, with that in mind, this would also be the same as this right here. All right, it's just flipped. And right here, well, these two would also be equal. All right, they have the same connectivity, so they're not constitutional isomers. Now, I want to clarify what I mean by different connectivity. So let's take the last two isomers that I drew. All right, so in each, we have single bonds all over the place, and we also have an oxygen between two carbon atoms. Let's take a look at the isomer on the left. So here, we have each carbon bonded directly to oxygen, those two carbons each have two hydrogens. All right, now let's look at the isomer on the right. Again, we have two carbons directly bonded to oxygen. Now, the carbon on the left has three hydrogens, and the carbon on the right of oxygen has two hydrogens. And that is what I mean by different connectivity. So there is a different number of atoms, of whatever you're looking at, bonded to an atom of interest in that same order. So that same order we're talking about is carbon, oxygen, carbon. And in this case, we see a different number of hydrogens uh, bonded to one of the carbons connected to oxygen in the one on the right. No matter how much you flip or turn these two isomers, they're not gonna have the same connectivity, right? They have their different connectivities, meaning a different number of atoms connected to the atoms we're looking at, and moving them around is not gonna make them fall off. Now, how do you know when you have drawn all the constitutional isomers for a particular uh, molecule? You know you're done drawing them if you keep connecting them and they just say have the same connectivity. All right, so these are seven constitutional isomers of C4H10O. Now, a question that you might be asking yourself is, well, how do I get good at drawing constitutional isomers? The answer is just to keep practicing. So keep doing these kind of problems. Okay, find worksheets online, find videos online, um, find websites online that are talking about um, constitutional isomers and providing you with some practice. And as a little bonus to help you out with that, I have provided you with a formula to find four constitutional isomers of. So this is the formula, C3H9N. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.